Welcome to my permaculture project. My name is Brian. If you're new to the channel, um, we are a small uh, goat and sheep producer in California. We have a monthly subscription model where we sell lamb and goat meat by the cut. Um, we do monthly deliveries to customers um, over a pretty wide range of um, California. And we farm on a pretty small acreage. Um, it's about five acres total. So there's really not a whole lot of land for, um, you know, goat and sheep production. They really require a lot more land than what we have. So I basically have to really try and get as much out of my land as I can. One of my working assumptions or one of my strategies in trying to get as much out of out of the land as I can is to try and have something growing as much of the year as I can and so um, just to kind of to illustrate this idea you'll notice in the video um, quite a lot of the vegetation is brown and dry and crispy and that's because in California the summers are very dry and in fact many of the winters are very dry as well and so we really don't have that much that's growing uh, during the peak summer season. And that's unfortunate because um, we're losing a lot of photosynthetic potential. So if I'm trying to grow out as much vegetation as I can, I should really try and get more vegetation growing during the peak summer months because that's when the maximum photosynthetic potential is. And the way I've decided to make use of that really potent summer solar energy is by planting a whole lot of trees. Um, trees are uh, highly nutritious, depending on the tree, of course, but you can get highly nutritious trees that grow quickly. They produce a lot of byproducts. Um, so they produce wood for fires. They produce wood for mushrooms. They produce, um, you know, I'm, I'm planting black locust. So um, black locust uh, is a nitrogen fixer. They produce fodder for the animals, and so really um, the goal, uh, the long-term goal of this farm is to uh, become a tree-based farm and really make as, uh, as good of use of the, of the peak summer solar energy as I can. This is my buddy Carlos. He's, uh, he helps out a ton on the farm. Um, he's clearing out the weeds and everything to make sure the electrical uh, poly wire does not uh, get shorted out. So he is in his element right now, uh, doing great work. I've got uh, this back fence and I'm going to line the back fence with trees. And uh, we're installing electric fencing to keep the animals out while the trees get established. This is a very, very tall order and uh, goats and sheep can get in there and destroy trees very quickly. So it's a very, very difficult um, undertaking to try and keep the animals out. But that's the basic setup is I'm gonna have trees lining this back fence as you see here. And then the basic idea is that these trees will serve as a windbreak together with a fodder source. Uh, so these are going to be planted very close together. They're going to be planted about three feet apart, which sounds super close for trees. But again, um, they are meant for a windbreak and for fodder, so they're not really going to grow to full size. In fact, if you look toward the upper part of the video, you'll notice that these trees are being planted pretty much right underneath a power line. And so I can't let them get too high anyway because there's a power line there. So I'm going to have to kind of keep them uh, trimmed up. I'll cut... Um, you know, fodder from the trees and throw them over the, over the electric fence uh, for the animals. And so basically um, it, it serves to have the trees right next to where the animals are so that you can basically, you don't have to move the fodder long distances to be able to feed it to them. You can basically just toss it over the fence and have the animals feed right there. And then I'll collect all the branches, uh, run them through a chipper shredder, and use those branches for mushrooms and kindling. This is meant to be a windbreak and I attempted to plant a windbreak several years back and you'll notice the trees on the right hand side. Those are willow trees 
and willow of course is a pretty soft wood we live in a very windy area so you can see those willow trees have literally been blown to a straight right angle relative to their trunks so um, I, I see now that willow is not really adequate for a windbreak for our purposes and so uh, the new trees that I'm planting they're very uh, tough strong trees I'm planting Osage orange and I'm planting black locust about three feet apart uh, from one another and so the idea there is um, since I know the wind is strong enough to where you know uh, light weak wood like willow is inadequate I'm going with this stronger um, more rigid wood like Osage and black locust um, they also have the benefits that um, they're high in protein Osage and uh, black locust are both high in protein black locust has many other benefits it's a nitrogen fixer it is um, it's got heavy nectar flow in the spring so it's highly productive for bees um, you can eat the flowers the wood uh, for both of these species is highly rot resistant and also high BTU firewood um, so there's there's really no end to the benefits of using these two species both of these have mildly invasive characteristics so black locust in particular um, if you cut a black locust down um, oftentimes it won't die and in fact um, it'll re-sprout from the stump and on top of that it will also send out suckers from its roots and so uh, you have to be careful uh, to make sure that you're not going to plant these in a, in, a, in a place where they're going to start to take over but black locust is um, not a super drought tolerant tree and California is a pretty dry place during the summer so my you know it may sound crazy that I'm planting an invasive species but my operating assumption is that whenever I want to kill off these black locust trees all I'll have to do is cut them during the summer uh, take care of any um, suckers that arise and then throughout the summer the trees will dry up you can see the area here is pretty dry and so the idea of a black locust trying to survive in a situation like that without water is pretty unlikely Osage is somewhat weedy somewhat of a weed tree also uh, not nearly as invasive as black locust um, but uh, they do produce a fruit with quite a few seeds and the squirrels will scatter the seeds all around they germinate pretty readily and so they do regenerate quite uh, robustly but it's not really invasive by most standards Uh, it came out okay. It wasn't that interesting, but I'm glad I have it. <laughs> tree, tree planting, tree planting is not the most action-packed activity.